Brainerd, Minnesota. The penultimate stop of the NHRA regular season. With the countdown looming in the distance, not only does this race mark the return of the peak antifreeze and coolant team, but also the highly anticipated return of fast Jack Beckman. With John Force continuing to recover following his devastating crash just two months ago in Richmond, Jack Beckman, who had been out of the driver's seat for nearly four years, was tapped to fill the seat of the peak Chevy Camaro for the remainder of the 2024 season. But the fact that if we do what that car and this team is capable of doing, we could bring John a 17th championship, like at 58, that makes me giggle. Hey! I guess it is, it's the first one I'm seeing. Hold on, wait, wait. hold on, hold on. And although the 2012 Funny Car Champ had been out of competition for an extended period of time, in the first qualifying run on Friday, it was like he never missed a beat. How about it? Welcome back, Jack Beckman. 392, 318 miles per hour, and JFR is back. Beckman's 392 in the opening qualifying session was bettered only by teammate and funny car points leader Austin Proc, who stole the pole away with a strong 391 at over 330 miles per hour in the final pair. Brittany Force's week kicked off with media and sponsor appearances on Wednesday and Thursday in Brainerd. drag racing team. There you go. However, at the track, Force and her Monster Energy team, led by crew chiefs David Grubnick and John Collins, kicked off the weekend by running a respectable 379 with a booming speed of over 334 miles per hour in her first run on Friday. Beckman laid down another solid pass in the second session later that evening, placing him seventh after day one. But Brittany Force lowered the boom once again, recording top speed of the meet at over 336 miles per hour to go along with the 372 to place her in the number six spot at the end of the day. Recap of day one of Jack back in John's seat in the Pete Camaro. Uh, first run, Excellent. Everything looked wonderful. The throttle disconnect shut the throttle off at 850 feet. We actually had a car quick enough to go low ET. We still were second best. We're fine with it. We got good data. Second run, car went out there, spark plugs with the cylinder pressure and a nitro engine. A lot of times it will literally just shoot the porcelain out. It was on the left side of the car. It dropped the cylinder, it moved over a little bit. The car still went 393 at 322 miles an hour. We're in the top half. If it's overcast tomorrow, we're gonna lean on this thing. I am really optimistic.
All three cars solidly locked in the field entering day two of qualifying, Rooney Forrest and Austin Proc can now set their sights on racking up more countdown bonus points as they were both set to compete in the mission Too Fast Too Tasty in HRA Challenge. Forrest and Beckman both struggled in their first runs on Saturday. However, Proc, in his Cornwell Tools Chevy Camaro, was able to put together another nice lap, defeating Bob Tasca and advancing into a sixth consecutive final round of the Mission Challenge. the starting line a great matchup but look at austin proc 386 0 334 they win the mission challenge they grab the number one qualifying spot and we should not have expected a dang thing less just wrapped day two of qualifying here in brainerd it's been a great weekend for the jfr cars all weekend long super pumped with this monster energy team we had three out of four good runs down the racetrack solid runs we were hoping for that fourth one but we just didn't get there but overall we ended up number three we ran a 369.8 which is awesome we run clay milliken in round one of eliminations tomorrow so looking forward to tomorrow we're in a really good position we got a great ladder and looking for a long race day and i'm with her three out of four for the peak chevy I'm in John's car, it's starting to feel like home. It was cool. We won a best of a 389 at 327 and I haven't done that for four years. We ended up number six and I consider that a great way to go into race weekend, but this guy, 
Yeah, we ended up uh, number one qualifier again and uh, got another Mission Too Fast, Too Tasty win. Uh, so more points going into the countdown when they reset the points and uh, really proud of that, really proud of this Cornwall Tools team. But I got to say it was great having Jack here this weekend. Uh, I finally feel a little bit more normal uh, having a funny car teammate back and um, he's doing an outstanding job. So I'm really proud to see that Pete Camaro go uh, 389. Uh, but we nicked him with a, a 386.0 and uh, ended up number one. So looking forward to a long race day. Me and Jack are on opposite sides of the ladder and we hope to meet in the finals. <laughs> Tension was in the air on Sunday morning in Brainerd, as all three John Forrest racing drivers had their sights set on claiming the Wally at the end of the day. Brittany Forrest, who entered the weekend sitting 10th in the top field standings, desperately needed to go rounds in Brainerd to protect her spot in the countdown to the championship. Force came up just short in a close race with Clay Milliken in round one of eliminations, and will head to the U.S. Nationals, the final race of the NHRA regular season, with a slim 55-point lead over Josh Hart, who sits in 11th place. Proc continued his winning ways, defeating Jim Campbell in round number one. But all eyes were now on Jack Beckman, who was competing in his first official round of competition in nearly four years. Beckman scored the round win, his first since Dallas in 2020, edging out young Bobby Bodie in a close side-by-side -side race. Unfortunately, both Beckman and Proc fell in round number two, ending JFR's day in Minnesota. But despite the early exits, the team was still able to end off the day on a high note, celebrating the 13th birthday of John Force's grandson, Jacob John Hood. Cupcakes. I don't want five. Hold them. Hold them. <laughs> 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 